right now we're winding our way up the mountain road up to 3,432 meters and the top of Irazu Volcano, which is one of the most beautiful volcanoes in all of Costa Rica. It's a very popular tourist attraction and erupted historically. As a matter of fact, in 1963, it erupted the day that JFK arrived in Costa Rica. Although Irazu has erupted 23 times in modern history, the show that it gave to the U.S. president is considered the most infamous. Lasting over two years, the eruption dumped huge amounts of ash over a wide area of central Costa Rica, wreaking havoc on the region. Built up ash and heavy rains combined to create huge flash floods that caused tremendous damage. Now a national park, thousands visit each year to view the magnificent crater and emerald lake that's formed here. This ruin is all the remains of what once was an observation platform. It was completely destroyed during the 1963 eruption. Although today, Irazu lies quiet, large fissures have developed in the side of the crater. There is some concern here that at some time in the future, we don't know exactly when, the entire northern face could slump away, causing a massive explosion of the volcano. And if you look closely, you can actually see cracks along the ridge where the rock is actually weakening. Irazu is not currently erupting. But not all of Costa Rica's volcanoes are sleeping. Rising 1,600 meters, Mount Arenal is the most active volcano in the country. Today, I'm joining an international team of scientists who are studying the subterranean magma flow of Arenal. This research may help predict eruptions that could threaten the surrounding area, including this nearby wind farm. Well, at the moment, we're just gathering together all the equipment for the field, so we have to gather all the seismometers, the, the solar panels, all that type of thing, and just organize the teams and get everybody ready to go up. We drive about halfway up the mountain by truck on the ash-covered road. From here we walk. The scientific team is transporting and installing seismic imaging equipment that will help the scientists better understand the underground magma movement on the volcano. Uh, we're just uh, taking up the cables for connecting the instrument. The seismometer needs to be connected to a computer and to a global positioning system for the time signal. So we're just gathering together all those cables so we can bring them up into the field with the seismometers and connect everything up. One, two. Climbing volcanoes is never easy. And this one is no exception. I wouldn't really call this so much a trail as a, uh, it's not really a trail. <laughs> Just follow the loose rocks up to the exploding mountain, that's all. I already hear rocks coming down the side of the mountain. Several times a day, Arenel spits out huge red hot lava blocks, just to remind us that we're climbing an active volcano. This, uh, rock that I'm walking on is leftover pyroclastic flow deposits from an eruption in 2000. Now unfortunately, that eruption killed two people, a woman and her guide. We're gonna be going well above this flow up into the extreme danger zone. I'm with a scientific expedition in Costa Rica, preparing to ascend Mount Arenal. They've come here 
armed with complex and delicate equipment to study the subterranean structure of this active volcano. But the area we're exploring today is well within the striking distance of Arenal's molten hot lava blocks and pyroclastic float. Like this one that killed two visitors here in 2000. Traveling under this part of the volcano is strictly prohibited. And typically, I wouldn't even be allowed up here. The only reason I am is because I'm with the scientists. Otherwise, this is considered an absolute no-no danger zone. All right, we've arrived at the site. Now begins the painstaking task of organizing the piles of wire, precisely laying out the field, and installing and calibrating the instruments. But what is the purpose of this expedition? What we're doing is we are trying to understand the nature of the seismic sources on the volcano. All volcanoes make, make noise, and uh, as seismologists, we put out instruments on the surface of the volcano to record those sounds that the volcano makes, much like a medical cardiograph, except we're looking at acoustic signals rather than electrical signals. And so what we're doing is putting out these instruments to try to understand what those signals are telling us about how fluids are moving in the subsurface in a volcano. Beneath every volcano, there's a labyrinth of underground chambers where 1,200 degree magma flows. First we checked how level it is. Yes. These tests help the scientists better understand how the magma is moving and where it might surface. We're putting out 10 instruments in what's called an array, so they're just out in a, in a semicircle. And we are installing those individual seismometers. And each seismometer records ground vibration. So they're continuous, even though we can't feel it here because we, we're not so sensitive to ground vi vibration, they're continuous vibrations as we stand here. These instruments are sensitive enough to detect those. And we can use some techniques to turn that information into a knowledge of what the near surface uh, variability or structure of the volcano is. So that's today's job. Dr. Bean, along with Costa Rican volcanologist Carlos Ramirez, supervised the project. Oh, it's nice and deep. Each sensor must be painstakingly positioned to get precise readings. Oh, yeah, that's really... My big boots come in handy for calibration. The data collected here may someday help volcanologists predict eruptions and ultimately save lives. Good, yeah. So it's working on all three components, yeah. One thing that Arnold was really known for is these large hot blocks of lava that come tumbling down the side of the mountain. And even today here, every now and then I can hear this avalanche of rocks coming down the side. I keep glancing over my shoulder, make sure they're not headed my way. Even the seasoned scientists get nervous working on this mountain. Well, I'll tell you, we're going to stay here for as short a time as possible, and put it that way. <laughs> you don't like to linger here? I wouldn't, I wouldn't linger. I'd say I wouldn't camp overnight uh, at this particular location. I wouldn't linger. Um, I mean, it's nice to be here. It puts an edge on, on it, but uh, you know, it, it can be dangerous as well. So we'll get in and out as quickly as we can. Scientists continue to monitor the volcanoes of Costa Rica while the adventurous enjoy the wild side of this diverse country. The Costa Rica is just amazing. There's just so much to see here. Of course, for a person like me, it's got everything. Incredible rains, lots of volcanoes, jungle, wildlife, you name it. I think I might have to retire here. Well, someday perhaps. Meanwhile, there's a lot more world left out there for me to explore.